Welcome to Biography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this episode, I'm going to explain how to apply and use watercolor grounds in biography. Watercolor grounds coat the wood, allowing it to accept paint in a similar way that paper does. Valerie Connell of Drawing with Fire introduced me to this idea. If you're not familiar with Valerie's work, you should be. Valerie creates beautiful art in biography, and she often incorporates other mediums like markers, ink, and watercolor into her work. What's more is that she is able to add color so that it complements instead of competes with the biography. Let's look at some photos. As you can see, Valerie does awesome work. Every Tuesday, she does a live video session, and it's a great opportunity to see her work in real time and be able to ask questions. If you can't make the live video, she also has a Facebook page to share your projects and get help. I'll put a link to both her channel and the Facebook page in the description below. As I said, I got the idea from Valerie but my first attempt at applying the grounds to a small board didn't go well. I'll show it to you. As you saw, I ended up with a lumpy, bumpy board. The board was so textured that it didn't take the color uniformly. I was very disappointed with my results, but I knew the problem was because I didn't apply the grounds smoothly. Armed with a bunch of scrap wood, I started experimenting with different application methods. And I found a method that produces smooth results, and I'm going to share those with you. So let's get to work. Thoroughly sand the board with at least 220 grit sandpaper. Then apply some water to the board. Let the board dry completely. Then sand the board again with at least 220 grit sandpaper. Now the board is ready. Use a clean paintbrush to lightly dampen the wood. This will help the grounds from drying out too quickly. Then dip the brush into the grounds and apply it to the board in a horizontal direction. After the board is coated, then brush over the board in a vertical direction to remove brush strokes and any clumps of grounds. Clean the brush of most of the grounds, blot the excess water, and brush the board again. Continue this process until the grounds look fairly uniform on the board and you don't see any clumps. Very lightly sand over the board with at least 300 grit sandpaper. For the second layer, Put some of the grounds into a mixing tub and add a little water to thin the grounds. Then apply the grounds to the board. Note that you do not pre-wet the board first. Rebrush to remove individual strokes and clumps. The grounds have a tendency to dry quickly, even on the brush, so clean the brush periodically. Plus, keeping the brush clean and damp will help spread the grounds. After you're done, then let the board dry for at least 30 to 60 minutes. Very lightly sand over the board. For all additional layers, do the exact same steps that were done during the second layer. Let each layer dry for 30 to 60 minutes before applying the next layer. Also, lightly sand before applying the next layer. This board has a smooth finish. Once you have gotten four to five layers of watercolor grounds applied, you need to let the board cure before using it. The jar says to let it sit 24 to 48 hours. To me, applying the grounds is a lot of work, and I didn't want to ruin the board by using it before it was fully cured, so I let it sit for the full 48 hours. After the board is cured, you can paint away on it. I did a test painting to show you the benefits of using watercolor grounds. I only coated half of the board with the grounds, 
so it will be easier to compare how the coated and uncoated areas react with the paint. So let's watch that. The lower half of the board has been coated with watercolor grounds, and the right half of the board is currently covered with airbrushing frisket. The upper right corner of the board does not have watercolor grounds applied to it. In this color test, you can really tell the difference between the treated and the untreated areas of the board. As you saw, paint on untreated wood acts more like a stain that you can't blend very well. With the watercolor grounds, you can blend the paint and eliminate paint strokes or brush strokes. Even after the paint is dry, you can rework it by adding a little water. At this point, I wanted to repeat the color test, but this time I wanted to apply the grounds over pyography artwork to see if the grounds would have any impact on the art. So let's watch some more painting. I burned a butterfly onto the board and then coated everything except the upper left corner with watercolor grounds. As you can see, the grounds do impart a bit of a sheen to the board. Like before, I started airbrushing on the left side of the board, so the entire right side of the board is covered in frisket. Now all the frisket is gone, and I'm using watercolors on this half of the board. At first, I was really trying to work on my non-existent painting skills, but that didn't last long. I very quickly remembered how much I hate paintbrushes and painting in general. So I decided to have some fun and just slop paint onto the board. I was very liberal with the water during that time. The watercolor grounds handled it wonderfully. Well, this concludes my painting test. I did the artwork around six months ago, and I don't see any signs of fading like I normally would with plywood. So the grounds did a good job of sealing and protecting the art. Now I have to be honest and state that if you're going to use airbrush for the color, I wouldn't bother with watercolor grounds. They're a lot of work to apply and they don't provide substantial benefits for airbrushing applications. Painting on the other hand is a completely different story and I highly recommend the grounds in that situation. Well that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you next week.